Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. So today I thought I'd spend a little bit more time discussing the topic of resonance structures. So we're going to do a couple of examples today, but before we do, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about why resonance structures exist and what exactly resonance structures are and ultimately how to write them. So resonance structures exist because of pi bonding, which is the overlap, the sideways overlap of p orbitals. And whenever you have a network that is three contiguous atoms or more of parallel p orbitals, well, the electrons, the pi electrons that reside in those p orbitals uh, can be shared or delocalized among that entire chain of parallel p orbitals. In other words, that entire three or more atom chain. So that's why resonance structures exist. And uh, when you look at resonance structures as they are drawn, um, the resonance structures that are shown it tends to imply that each of those individual structures exists for a short period of time and then it interconverts back and forth like some dynamic equilibrium. <clears throat> and that is not the case. Resonance structures um, are only different sort of extremes uh, and the true structure, and this is something I didn't clarify very much in my last video, the true structure of a molecule or polyatomic ion that can be represented by multiple resonance forms is actually somewhat of a hybrid of those resonance forms. So just to uh, go back to the example that I showed you in the last video, my, my first video on resonance forms, um, we, sh we looked at the two resonance structures of the acetate ion, right? And I, what I said in that video was, or essentially what I said was neither one of that, uh, of those resonance forms tells the whole story. The true structure is actually somewhere in the middle. And oftentimes you'll see the acetate ion represented by this sort of notation here, where instead of each, any one of those uh, oxygen atoms having a double bond with the carbon, instead it's like this dotted line where they both sort of have a double bond and that negative charge is sort of just delocalized among that entire thing. I really like this notation a lot, but it does kind of violate the, the rules of Lewis dot structures because Lewis dot structures, you're only dealing with, with dots and now you have this dotted line. So that's why we have resonance structures. It's because the limits of our drawing capabilities uh, sort of force us to, to represent one structure using one hybrid structure using multiple structures. So more about what resonance forms are, well, uh, they are Lewis dot structures and they differ only in the position of pi electrons, again, the ones that are involved in pi bonding in which we have double or triple covalent bonds, never single, pi and non-bonding or the lone pair electrons. So I'll repeat that one more time because I kind of, it was kind of a run on sentence. So resonance forms only differ in the position of pi and non-bonding electrons. Uh, the other rule is that um, resonance structures must be legitimate Lewis dot structures, right? You can't have five bonds on a carbon. You can't have, you can't really violate the octet rule. Uh, you can't uh, violate the rules of uh, formal charge, which is really important. I do have a video that's all about formal charge. Um, the sum of the formal charges must equal the charge of the molecule or polyatomic ion. That's one rule. And the other rule about formal charge is that uh, when there's multiple Lewis dot structures possible, you're going to pick the one or ones that have the fewest number of non-zero formal charges. So I am rambling a lot about this. And the reason why is because all of these things are important. You have to tie all of these concepts together to even remotely take a stab at understanding resonance structures. So if you're fuzzy on those topics, check the description out. Uh, I'll have links to to uh, my videos, my video on how to write a Lewis dot structure from a chemical formula, um, of course, my first video on resonance structures, and also that formal charge video, and that should get you where you need to be to understand uh, resonance forms really well. So I think we had a good review <laughs> of resonance forms just now, <clears throat> so I think we're ready to climb into a couple of examples. So this example is the ozone molecule, O3. And I'm not going to go through the entire process of drawing the Lewis dot structure. Um, I'm just going to take you straight to the Lewis dot structure. And here it is. <laughs> you can confirm for yourself that this is a valid Lewis dot structure in that the uh, total number of valence electrons is what it should be. Uh, all atoms have an octet and also the rules of formal charge are satisfied. We have a plus and a minus that add up to a sum of zero formal charge and there's no way to draw this any other more stable way that has, uh, for instance, zero charge, uh, formal charges on anything. So take a moment to confirm that this O3 Lewis dot structure is legitimate.
Okay, <laughs> so now that we've confirmed that, let's see how many resonance structures we can draw um, in addition to the structure that is already on your screen here. So <clears throat> we have these three contiguous oxygen atoms, and I'll just label them oxygens one, two, and three. So notice that um, they're not all equivalent. In other words, there's a double bond between oxygens one and two, and a single bond between oxygens two and three, and also um, oxygen two has a formal charge of plus one, and oxygen three has a formal charge of minus one. So the question is, is there another way that this can be drawn in which all we've done is move the pi electrons and the non-bonding electrons around and still get a legitimate Lewis dot structure? And the answer is yes. So you might have to train your eyes in order to see this, um, but it, eventually you'll just sort of intuitively understand and you, you know you can actually practice this too by just playing with the electrons and seeing how you can move them around and the resulting structure, does that give you a legitimate Lewis dot structure where the octet rule is satisfied and the rules of formal charge are satisfied? Well, I mean, I, again, I encourage you to try it. So what if, for instance, we took one of the lone pairs on oxygen three and we moved that into the bonding region between oxygens two and three, uh, that would give a double bond. And then what if simultaneously we took one of those uh, double bond, uh, one of those pairs of pi electrons that belong to that double bond between oxygens one, or one and two, and we moved that to oxygen one, giving it another lone pair. Well, that would also give it a minus one charge and the resulting structure would look like this. So again, <clears throat> pause the video if you have to, do whatever you have to do to confirm that this second structure that we've shown is a legitimate Lewis dot structure. So it is. The last thing to do is to uh, place the correct symbol between these two structures, and that is going to be a single double-headed arrow. It's not the two half-headed arrows. That represents a dynamic equilibrium, and that doesn't apply here. Instead, it's a single arrow uh, with two heads on it. And I'm going to stop right there because um, I've done this molecule before and I understand that there is no third resonance form that applies. So this, these are the only two resonance forms that apply. And again, it's not a dynamic process, right? The true structure of ozone is like a hybrid between these two extremes. So the next example that we're going to do is the carbonate ion, that's th CO3, whoops, tap, tap my microphone there for a second, CO3, 2 minus, carbonate ion. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to take you straight to the Lewis dot structure, um, and this is what the Lewis dot structure of the carbonate ion looks like. So we've got this, and notice that we have um, one of the bonds between carbon and oxygen is a double bond, the other two single bonds, and those two singly bonded oxygens have uh, minus one formal charges, which makes sense because if you add all the formal charges together, you should get the charge of the ion, which is in this case is two minus, so we add minus and minus and we get two minus, so that all makes sense. Um, but see if you can look at this and see if you can uh, think about how many other resonance structures might be drawn here. Well. In this case, the oxygen on the bottom has the, um, the double bond. What if we gave the double bond to the oxygen over there on the top left? That would give uh, minus one in charges to the other two oxygens. And look, this is a perfectly valid Lewis dot structure. Now, what if we did the same thing, but on the oxygen on the top right? So what if we gave the oxygen on the top right the double bond and the other two a minus one formal charge and, and the three lone pairs that come with that? Well, again, that's also a legitimate Lewis dot structure. So if we place, again, the correct symbols between these, uh, we'll see that we'll have our finished product, which is three resonance forms of the carbonate ion. So I'm gonna stop the video there. I hope this was helpful. If you'd like to see more examples or if you need me to elaborate on something or if there's something that I just plain didn't make clear, please leave a comment, let me know. I need your feedback. All right, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.